let's come up with a nice equation for how we can easily find orthogonal vectors to some vector handed to us that is a three-dimensional vector. So finding orthogonal vectors in R3 is what we want to do. I'm going to work with an arbitrary vector v from R3, so it has three dimensions. Those values are v1, v2, and v3, so some arbitrary numbers in R3. And I want to find some vector x, whose components are x1, x2, x3, such that x is orthogonal to v. So if you haven't seen this notation, that kind of perpendicular symbol just means that x is orthogonal to v. That's how you read that quantity right there. What do we know about orthogonal vectors? Orthogonal vectors have a dot product of zero. So v dot x is equal to zero is my criteria. So if I multiply that out, that means that x1 v1 plus x2 v2 plus x3 v3 has to equal zero. So if I move these two components to the other side of the equation, that says that x3 v3 has to equal a negative x1 v1 minus x2 v2. So if I kind of pick some values for x1 and x2 on the right side of the equation, that then tells me what I have to set x3 on the left side to make the two sides equal. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just pick some arbitrary values for x1 and x2. And then for those particular values of x1 and x2, let's compute what x3 has to be for this equality to hold. So if we do that, we end up with the right side being a negative alpha 1 v1, a negative alpha 2 v2. And then if I divide by v3, I can figure out that x3 has to be equal to this quantity right here. Obviously, by dividing by v3, I made a pretty big assumption, namely that v3 is not equal to 0. If you are given a vector and v3 is equal to 0, obviously we can't do this approach. You'd have to modify this approach slightly, but that's a pretty equal, easy thing to do. Instead of trying to isolate v3 over here, go ahead and just pick the other quantity that's not 0. Maybe it's v1, maybe it's v2, and come up with a very similar equation. So we're not going to generalize it. I think you can kind of see the pattern. But for now, just assume that v3 is not equal to 0. And if it's not equal to 0, basically I can pick arbitrary values for x1 and x2 and then compute what x3 has to be to make sure that this dot product is indeed 0. So given that I've chosen an arbitrary value for alpha 1, an arbitrary value for alpha 2, I've computed what x3 needs to be. It needs to be equal to this. And this is my vector x. Notice that this is for any values, alpha 1 and alpha 2. In the previous video, when we were given a single vector in R2, I could find two vectors that were orthogonal to it in R2. In R3, if you give me a vector, I can find basically an infinite number of vectors in R3 that are all orthogonal to that starting vector. I can basically pick one that's orthogonal and kind of spin it around to an infinite number of locations, and those vectors are all orthogonal to my starting vector. So there's basically some free variables here that we can choose arbitrarily. As an example, let's go ahead and do an example. Let's say that we're given the vector 1, 2, 3, and I want to find some orthogonal vector to it. There's actually an infinite number of orthogonal vectors. Let's just find one. So I'm going to go ahead and pick some alpha 1 and alpha 2, okay? and then I'm going to, based on those values, go ahead and populate a negative alpha 1 over 3, because there's a 3 there, minus alpha 2 over 3, because there's a 3 right there. Remember, whatever that third coordinate is, we divided by it right there. So an infinite number of vectors I could construct. I'm going to go ahead and pick some very specific values for alpha 1 and alpha 3. I'm going to make my life easy. I'm dividing by 3 right here. So I'm going to pick some alpha 1s and, alpha, and an alpha 2 that are easily divisible by 3. I don't have to do that. I'm just going to do it to make kind of life easy and make the fractions work out nice. So if alpha 1 is 3 and alpha 2 is 6, I end up with a 3 here, a 6 here, and then what do I end up with down here? 3 over 3 is, a negative, is 1, so it's a negative 1. And then I subtract off 6 over 3, which is 2. So that gives me... Oh, and I actually noticed I made a little mistake. This was our general equation for x3. And when I wrote this down over here, initially I left off the v1 and the v2 that was sitting there, right? There needs to be a v1 over v3 right here and a v2 over v3 right here. So I messed that up initially. 
So when I wrote out this right here for arbitrary alpha 1, alpha 2, I really needed to have minus alpha 1 times v1, and v1 is 1, minus alpha 2 times v2, and alpha 2 is 2. So be careful there. I definitely messed that up when I wrote it down initially. I went and backtracked and fixed it right now. And then we can go ahead and talk about how do I get that third component. 3 over 3 is a negative 1. And then I have 6 times 2 is 12. 12 over 3 is 4. So it's a negative 1 minus 4 gets me minus 5. So be careful on that. Apologies. All right, so let's go ahead and check this. I claim that that is an orthogonal vector. There's actually an infinite number of them. And we can go ahead and check and make sure that this is indeed orthogonal. I can dot it with my initial x. So 3 times 1 plus 6 times 2 plus 3 times a negative 5. This is 3 plus 12 minus 15, which is indeed equal to 0. So just a little example of an easy equation for how you can write down a vector in R3 that is orthogonal to some initial vector. This assumes that V3 is not zero, but you can easily do a similar thing on another coordinate if your particular vector is zero. All right, that's it for now.